you're looking at here is the install of a crown box. This is what a crown box basically looks like. You know, sometimes, you know, it's not, you know, all the sides are not open as it is. We wanted them open because we needed access to different sides and areas when it comes to wiring it. Okay, now, uh, we both, we have both sides open. At the moment, you don't see that, but we're about to actually take off both of the covers on the other two sides just because it's going to make it a lot easier and a lot lighter to work with okay now the ceiling was pretty low so it was a little you know uh it gave us a little problems because the ceiling was low and we couldn't really lift it up all the way if we had a high ceiling we would have been able to easily lift it up and put it right on top of the actual disconnect that wasn't the case here okay so we what you're looking at here is a service, okay, that we had taken apart and we relocated it, basically. The only thing that's staying here is the actual main switch and that's about it. Okay, everything else is going to go to another location. So you'll just have your main switch down here and, the, and you'll have your panels and distribution panels at another location. Okay, and we're putting a crown box here so that we can bring all of our conduits into that crown box and we can land our wires into that main disconnect okay so as you can see it's a whole lot lighter you know it obviously once the covers are off so a quick tip for you would be you know if you're mounting boxes that are large like this i would take the covers off it just makes it that much more easier to work with okay and what we did was we put it on chains we made you know four holes on the top of the box we hooked up our chains to it we hooked up our blockchain and we just lifted it up it was that easy and that was it from there you know after we took all the covers off we just lifted it up there was a piece of cake after that pretty much as you can see we had a lot of things above us we had a lot of pipes you know it was it was a little you know troublesome but we got it working and we got it up and mounted and that was pretty much it so uh as you can see when you're dealing with you know switch gear you want to you want to be careful at all times you know you want to work safe and um you know just be aware of your surroundings mostly most of the stuff is all mechanical stuff you know rigging a lot of rigging and a lot of mechanical stuff nothing really that hard you know nothing that you can't do nothing that you can't handle most of it looks intimidating but it's it's just you know once you do it once it, it's all the same <clears throat> if you have a good blockchain or even a good winch electrical winch you know you're 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 all good see as you can see the ceiling was right there where the actual crown box ended and yeah, so the old switch is going to get removed, which I didn't show you there, but this is where the wires are actually going to land. And so we know it's working. Okay, I'm going from brown, A to C nothing okay then i'm gonna go from a to b nothing all right then i'm gonna go from b to c nothing okay From B to neutral, nothing. Okay. Neutral is to C, nothing. Neutral to A, nothing. Did I miss anything? No. Okay. Let's do from A to C, I did. That's it, nothing. All right. We're still working, no continuity between phases or neutral. Done.
this is midway into the install okay we had the crown box and we put in these other boxes that are connected to the crown box so we could actually run our wires in. and as you can see here you know when you're dealing with large boxes and these large wires you know I, I like to put something in that's going to support them because if I didn't then they just would have been sagging right you know where the cover is going to go and that's not going to be very helpful so I like to put some kind of supports you know where the wires are going to be it makes it just that much neater and you know this is the old switch that we had to remove we're removing it and those are the bus bars coming from the power company side so we're just going to join them here and it'll join to the actual new service disconnect and this is just going to be removed it'll be just like an enclosure kind of like a pull box so this will all get closed up this is going to be the new switch and Basically, that's that's it in a nutshell. You know, our conduits connect to the actual boxes, and we just run them through here and into the gear. We didn't want to do, a, you know, a 90 and then a 90 down. This was just a easier way of working with the wires, you know, as possible. These are all that I'm pointing are all going up to the new location. You know, everything from the actual, you know, meters that you're seeing there back are all going to the new location so we disconnected them all and we brought them up to the new location the only thing that'll be here that's all the old wiring that we're going to have to cut out basically everything is going to go up to the new location the only thing that's staying down there as i said before is the actual main disconnect so we have our box there we're just bringing that box we'll do more piping into the disconnect as like i'm saying right now and that'll be the load side of the actual disconnect those fees there are going to the new location up where the new service is going to be at so basically you just re relocated the service from one spot to another and we left the main switch downstairs where you're looking at now that was basically it like i said you know when you're dealing with this switch gear um you know most of this stuff is is um basically the same once you do it once it's basically you know it's all the same so this is here this is the load side of the disconnect okay sending the power up to the new location okay so we crimped some of them already we, we still have more to go it's um we still have a lot more organizing to do as you can see um can get a little messy you know you have that no lock stuff in these actual uh crimps so i like to get a rag and wipe that but not everybody does that okay guys so basically a little bit about switch gear okay like installing switch gear and, and such you know usually you you can lay out your switch gear all right you can you know lay it out on the floor so they can pour a pad you know about a couple of inches so that you can have somewhere to actually put your switch gear on top of okay now if you do that or if you decide on just going straight onto the floor that's your choice okay usually they want to lift it up off the floor a little bit but that's not always the case now one thing that i find easy is that i always like to put my kind off and i line it up with my uh, holes that are on the switch gear where we use to bolt down to the actual floor <clears throat> okay so what i do is i line up my kind off and i take my measurement for wherever my holes are, okay, from the back and to the front. And I just put Kindorf straight down all the way and I lined it up straight. And this way I have somewhere to bolt my uh, my gear down to the Kindorf. Because if we don't and you decide to do it where you just, you know, put the anchor down on the floor, then it, it's, it's a little harder. It's a pain in the butt because you'll have to actually, you know, uh, uh, make sure that your anchors are exactly precisely where they need to be and then you'll it's just a little harder I feel that when you put it on Kindorf, it's a lot easier to install it okay but you don't have to there are many ways to do it okay another thing is you know when you're putting this the switch gear together there's sections okay like you see here this is actually two pieces okay this is piece five or whatever you know so on in between there you'll see these holes now this is what we use to actually put a bolt through it so we can put the two sections together this way you know they're butted up against each other these are bolted together okay and every section is the same thing it's bolted together okay they're all bolted together and that's done on the inside okay you'll have to actually get on the inside and bolt it down to do that 
Most of the time, though, you, you'll have some back doors where you could actually have access to. Now, just a quick tip. You, you do have to have some clearance for this. I'm not going to get into that. But if there is, you know, access from the back, you need a certain amount of clearance. Like, I'm not going to get into that. This is more on, you know, installing the actual switch gear. Now, when we install this, you know, this is a crown box. This is not a part of the switch gear. We ordered these boxes. Okay, but we, we put some Kindorf up there and we jacked it up, you know, and we placed it exactly where we needed to place it, you know, and we did that with every single section of the switch gear. Then we went ahead and put some crown boxes so that we could install our conduits to the top of it, okay, and wireways and such, okay, as you see there. We bolted down the crown boxes onto the top of the switch gear and we took the top of the covers off so it's all open. Okay, so like this is the inside of the, of the gear. So as you can see, like these are one of the bolts right here that holds the two sections together, okay? And you have another one up top there and there's another one on the bottom, okay, right over there. All right, now this is the inside of the backs, you know, of, of, the, of the switch gear. As you can see, these are the bus bars, okay? If you have to, for some reason, put this together, don't forget to torque your, your, your actual bolts, okay? Make sure you torque those. See, in the case of this disconnect right here, this is just a fire pump disconnect. It's a 1200 amp disconnect. We didn't actually put any Kindorf on the nick. We just went ahead and, and mounted it on the pad. Unlike this one here, okay? We just went ahead and mounted it on the pad. So, you know, you you can decide on doing whatever it is that you want. This one here is the same thing. We had Kindorf underneath the bottom, okay, for the front and for the back. And it was just a lot easier to mount it, you know, it was a lot easier to bolt it down to the Kindorf than it was to bolt it down to the floor, you know, so, um, and, it, and it's pretty decent, you know, shallow Kindorf will do and you, can, you can't even see it, so it works out, it works out perfect, see, now, another thing over here, see, they went ahead and they did it with Kindorf as well over here, now, for this distribution panel, we went ahead and we just used deep Kindorf. We raised it off the floor a little bit because we didn't have a pad poured for us on this one. So we just went ahead and we raised it with three inch Kindorf and it was easy for us to bolt it down. It wasn't so bad. And we went ahead and we bolted it to the wall as well as, you know, bolting it down to the floor. It was just easier that way. See, these are two disconnects that are put together, okay? They're two separate disconnects. But well, we went ahead and we had a, a pad port for us, okay? The same measurement of the, of the actual disconnects. And same thing, we ran some Kindle shallow across the, the, the pad so that we can mount our actual, you know, disconnects and bolt them down. Okay, and what we did, because it was top heavy too, we took some L brackets and we bolted it to the actual gear and we bolted it to the wall. You know, that gave us a level disconnect and it was also secured as well, okay? So that was pretty much it for that, okay? And you see we have our wireways coming in six by six for these monstrosity of the transformers. These are 750 kVA transformers, okay? So you can see the actual nameplate there. All right, and for these transformers, we went ahead and we just bolted them straight down. All right, and um, for this, we didn't want to put Kindorf because it was just going to be, it, it wasn't going to work for us. We didn't want to do that, and these things are really heavy. But like I said, it's a little harder because you have to put them down. You'll have to actually mark out the holes, put our anchors in, and then try to actually, you know, get it in line and in place to put our bolts in. Now, this is just a word of advice, too, for when you're mounting, you know, units or panels, whatever, meters, on a round column, what I like to do is I like to sandwich, you know, um, two candles together, okay, 
I sandwich them together, and then I go ahead and put my straight pieces there, and we can mo- and then you can mount something on a round, you know, uh, column. It's it's easier to mount something on a round column. So you just sandwich your your kindles together like such, and then now you can start building off of that, as you can see. Okay. And as you can see here, like we're not actually, this is already already done, but you know, in the midst of it, what we do is we like to get our kind off and we place the kind off above where our gear is supposed to be. So now that we know that our gear is gonna go right here, we put a kind off, okay, and we bolt it up to the ceiling and we do the whole length of the gear up high so that we can use a blockchain to lift up our gear and put it in place. And it just works out so much easier. With the chain, with the block chain and a J bar or something, and it helps us just put our gear in place that much easier. See here, this is one actual service. We have six services here. This is one actual service. And it's there's a gap here. You see how we actually did it? The Kindle is just stretching throughout the whole pad. And this is another service. Right here is another service, another complete service. Also, when you're going through this, you want to go ahead and look at the advisory board, which is something that I'm going to show you right now, which is this. Okay, so here, let me show you the advisory board. All right, you have the single line diagram, okay, which is right here. All right, which tells you, you know, where all your fuses are. Uh, are going, you know, which section goes with which section, you know, you have um, this section right here, it'll tell you what it, what buckets it has and what switches it has, you know, this is the bolt switch right here, it's a 400, 4,000 amp switch, you know, so you, you basically know what you're looking at and how to set it up here, okay, so... And this is another one over here. This is the actual, you know, advisory board as well. So you can actually check here and see, okay, you know, this section right here is going to go together with this section, which, you know, it has it down here, one of five, two of five, and, you know, three of five, four of five, and five of five. So it tells you how to actually, you know, put them together. And these shows you all the side views of each section as well, okay? So it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's not really that hard to put these things together. It's more intimidating than anything, but once you start, it's, it's really easy. You get the hang of it. Okay, so you can see here, you know, everything is pretty much set out for you. Okay. Also, really quick, this is off topic, but it has to do with installations as well. Is when I'm, you know, mounting a wireway to, you know, the side of a transformer, whether it's a small wireway or whatever, you know, even on, um, you know, panels or that are going on the wall or whatever. I like to put a kind of support right underneath. Number one, it gives me the height that I want. Two it makes sure that I'm level because if I level out my Kindorf, then when I put something on top of it, I'm, I'm already leveled as it is. All right, so it makes it that much easier to install and to stay level and at the, the measurement that I need. As you can see here. A quick tip too, like I, I really, I'm not a fan of using, you know, 90s, you know, elbows on wireways. I like to do kind of like compound 90s because when you're dealing with larger wires, it's just hard to, you know, bend it so sharp, especially when you're throwing a lot of big cables in there. So I like to do 245s just to make it a wider 90. Just a little tip, you know, just a little tip. Just a little tip. Here we have one service left to terminate. These are the main feeds coming from our end box. We haven't terminated them yet. Right now we're 
temping out this service through our other services. Once we're ready to switch to permanent power, then we'll land these and we'll go ahead and turn it on. That's pretty much it for that. Okay, like I said, you can check your advisory board for everything that has to do with the installations of your switch gear. Okay, if you have a big switch gear, you'll have an advisory board. But if it's something small, you know, then you might not need or you might not have an advisory board. You know what I mean? This is a pretty big uh, electrical room. So, um, yeah, I mean, we have six services. As you can see, one here, you have two over there, okay? I'm sorry, you have two here, okay? You have two over there. And you have two over here, okay? So this big stretch right here is actually two, okay? And this is phase one, okay? What I mean is, is that there's gonna be another phase that we have to actually take out this middle section right now, okay? Because this middle section is what's temping out this service over here from this service. So there's bus bars that are in between here that brings the power from this service to this service temporarily. Now, when we're ready to actually land these, then we'll take this transition piece off where all it is is just bus bars, plates that are joining the two services together. We'll take that off and then there'll be two independent services. Okay, there'll be two independent services. Okay, so yeah, that'll, that's that for that. All right, I went over how to actually mount it really not that hard you just have to actually you know figure out how you're going to actually lift your gear you know i like to put kindorf up like i said before on the ceiling you get a couple of jack chains and you can jack these things up and put them right where you need them you know safely that's pretty much it you know always when you have these disconnects that are these large disconnects thousand amp twelve hundred amp eight hundred amp just, uh, um, and they're all, you know, the disconnects in your room. You want to be careful and be on point and, and make sure that you take off the, the bonding jumpers. Sometimes they'll have these metal plates that are bonding jumpers. And if it's after the first disconnect, then you don't need that. Uh, you don't need to bond it anymore. Okay. So you might have to take that off or not. But if, it, if you need it, then you could leave it. But just you want to know that most of these will come because they're service rated, you know, disconnects. So they'll come with it bonded already to the neutral. From the ground to the neutral, it'll be bonded. So you'll have to take that plate off. Uh, I believe all of these are already off, removed, but I can show you actually where they are. See, so this is our ground. <clears throat> it's grounded to the actual case. And this is our neutral ball. So there was a plate that was connecting the two. We had to remove that so that it was no longer bonded together, okay? Because it was after the first disconnect, so we didn't need to bond it anymore, okay? And um, also, you know, you want to be careful. You know, we've had a, a lot of instances where, um, you know, in this company, we've had some, you know, people come from temp agencies and, they landed the line side on the bottom, you know, for some reason, someone told them that with these big disconnects, the line goes on the bottom and the load goes on the top. Um, I've never seen that. I've always seen line on the top and load on the bottom, but um, you want to be careful with that because if you put the line on the bottom, then when, you, when you're off, when your disconnect is off and you want to change out fuses, that's still going to be live. And we've had that situation with a couple of these disconnects that some people had, you know, wired it incorrectly. All right. So you want to be careful with that. Always check for voltage. You know, um, even when changing our fuses, you want to go ahead and check it just to be on the safe side. Okay. And, um, you know, work safe all the time. All right. So these are 1,000 amp or if I'm not mistaken, 1,200 amp disconnects. Okay, so they came with the actual, you know, main bonding jumper on this. So it'll, it'll have it here, you know, it'll tell you. So if you don't need it, you need to make sure you remove it, okay? And it has the neutral disconnect link as well. 
So yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the neutral disconnect link. See, that's that's it right there, okay? Now, this is the neutral ball, okay? As you can see, you have the neutral ball that's coming from the line side of the neutral, I mean, of, of the disconnect, and that would be the neutral from the load side. Now, it's linked together, okay? Now, if you ever need it disconnected for some reason because, you know, your, your disconnect is off, but you could have power coming in on on the, you know, voltage in on the neutral. You know, you could still have voltage coming in on the neutral. So if you want to actually go ahead and disconnect that, you can by taking off this plate and you isolate it, okay? You would end up isolating that and there would only be, you know, uh, you definitely wouldn't have any voltage on the load side anymore. So that's what the neutral disconnect is for. It's actually a little more, it goes a little more, in, you know, deeper than that, but um, that's all I got for now. All right, so that's what the neutral disconnect link is basically for. You know, you can isolate, you know, your, your, your neutral, from, you know, from line and load. All right, so you have the neutral disconnect link, and that's that plate right there. You also have, like I said, the, the main bonding jumper, which is from here to here. <clears throat> okay. And that's pretty much it for that. How this works over here, I can end up tripping it just by turning this. All right, I don't have the bar here, but you end up turning it, and, and you, that's how you turn it on. Let me show you... One of these, uh, I believe these are vacuum breakers. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. But um, these here, the way you do it, when you see these levers here, okay, you'll need to charge it, okay? And how you do that is you'll have to pull the lever. Some breakers are different, but you'll have to pull the lever three times, all right? And it'll say charged. And once it's charged, then you'll go ahead and push the on button and it'll turn on the breaker. Now to turn it off, all you gotta do is push off and that's it, pretty much, okay? And yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for that, all right? So these bad boys here, you, you flip the switch that way, all right? You know, it's on green, so right now you know it's off. Once I put it towards the left, then it would be on. Okay, if you ever need to open these while they're in the on position, okay, you can do so by actually, if you read the inside of the door, it'll always tell you how to, how to bypass that. But there's always a way to open these because there has to be a way to open these, you know, so you can test. Now, if you look in here, it'll tell you. Now, for this one here, if I actually... Okay, so basically here what you're seeing is this little contraption that I built off the wall to lift up the actual switch gear. Okay, now <clears throat> I had to do it this way because obviously we don't have a ceiling, but if you have a ceiling, you could put a piece of Kindle on the ceiling, put your chain over it, and just lift it up. Now, a word of advice, when you're lifting up the actual switch gear, you want to put you know you want to strap it onto somewhere on the switch gear that's not going to mess it up you know somewhere along there where it's you know it's sturdy and you could actually lift it up because believe it or not a lot of places on the switch gear is really you know fragile so you want to be careful with that of where you're lifting it up from now in a little bit you'll see that i have a rope tied off to the bottom of it that's just for safety precautions so that the actual gear doesn't go swinging everywhere when it actually does lift up off the floor now you could either choose to do this or not being that i was alone i went with uh the safety rope and i tied it off somewhere so that when it does lift up it just goes straight up and it does not swing and hit me or anybody else or damage itself you know what i mean now also you, you want to take into account that, um, you know, so I had my uh, support here with the blockchain at a certain height. I couldn't go any higher because I didn't have a, a tall enough ladder. But it, it just made it, you know, so you want to take that into account too and make sure that you put it at a height that, you know, it's going to lift it up enough to where, you know, you ain't, you're not going to have to do it over again because it was too short. So make sure that you put your support at a high enough level where it's going to lift it up off the floor and put it on the pad where you want it. Okay, so yes, 
This is something that I, I put together because we didn't have a ceiling, so I put some angle brackets and I put a piece of Kindorf regular. This is just regular uh, um, deep Kindorf, nothing special. It lifted it up just just fine, you know. And um, so yeah, with just a couple of angle brackets and that was it, pretty much. On the other side, I didn't have enough angle brackets, so I actually cut the Kindorf and I bent it and um, that worked just fine too as well. Now, um, what you're seeing here is I'm measuring it to make sure that it's going to clear it off the floor. And I was, you know, just fine. You know, I had just made it so it was going to go right on top of the pad just great. Okay, so, like I said, you just want to you, you wanna make sure that, you know, um, you're working safe and you take into account, you know, your surroundings and how much you're going to lift it off the floor. You want to make sure you put your support for your blockchain on the right spot so that it doesn't move away from your target, if you know what I'm saying. Like, you want to put it so that it lifts it up and it puts it right on your target. You don't want to be messing around with this too much when it's in the air, off the floor, okay? Like I said before, mostly installing switch gear and, and, and things like this, it's, it's mostly all rigging stuff, you know, most mechanical stuff. Um, so... If you're not inclined in that aspect, then, um, you know, I'm hoping the videos will help. You know, basically the videos is not telling you how to do it. It's giving you ideas of how to do it. This is by no means the only way to do it. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have done it a different way. I'm just trying to spark ideas in your head to show you of ways that you can go about doing it. When you go ahead and do it for your first time, I'm pretty sure you'll have other ways or you might do it the same way that I do it you know this is just to spark ideas in your head you know um, if you're an apprentice I'm trying to take the intimidation away from installing this switch gear you know also other tools that you might want that I don't have here shown on the video is J bars or um, anything that can help you get under the actual gear to lift it up or to slide it over a little bit dollies some good dollies is something you're gonna need here you're seeing me you know tie off the rope okay I put the rope around the gear okay and I'm gonna tie it off on the other end to um, a beam this way it does not swing around anywhere okay that was basically the main objective <laughs> basically the main objective of the rope okay now um, this was the first one that we lifted this was the smallest one out of all of them and um, that's the one that I started with now as I go around the whole wall installing these you know it gets a little heavier because each gear is a little bit bigger this is the smallest one like I said and like I said there's no ceiling where I could actually you know mount a support where I could actually hook my blockchain to there was nothing above us like as you can see it's up on the roof so it made it a little difficult and on top of that up on the roof there was no way to actually get access to bring any equipment any good equipment up to the roof now as you see here it's already all mounted okay uh, pretty much you know to mount it on the pad we weren't able to see that's how I put it up on the blockchain you know I had that support up there now to mount it on the gear uh, on the pad was a problem because being that it was a, on the roof you know they wanted us to lift it up off the floor on top of it being on the pad they wanted us to lift it off off the pad as well so that they could waterproof okay the roof guys would not you know give them a warranty if they weren't able to waterproof underneath the gear so I had to lift it up a few inches so they can get under there here being that the gear was top heavy I went ahead and I actually bolted the back to the wall so that it wouldn't you know in the future tip over this is how we did it lifted up off the pad just the pieces of Kindorf with some L brackets and um, that was basically it you know with some three inch Kindorf underneath it and that was that. Like I said, it's all mechanical. This is nothing difficult to do. Um, pretty much self-explanatory, okay? We had to raise it all up, and that was it. After they waterproofed, we ran our conduits, as you can see, and yeah, we're in business, you know? Pretty much, that's the inside of the gear. You see where I'm grabbing my gear. It's actually like on the chassis, you know, of the actual 
enclosure. You know, you want to lift it up for some really secure spots. You don't want to break anything on that gear because it's expensive, you know. You don't want to do that. So we had many conduits going into these gears. This is all the generator gear, pretty much. These were not getting bolted together. Usually, you know, in a switch gear room, some of them, most of them are bolted together. These weren't, okay, because these were separate enclosures. There was one enclosure that had a section one and two that was bolted together. Okay, uh, most of the time you'll be bolting them together. Here I'm just giving you a little clip of the wire pull and that's pretty much it, you know, I just wanted to show you some of the wire pulling and aluminum is really hard to pull some wire through, let me tell you, it's really, really tough. You have to use a lot of pulling. Yeah.